Hello and welcome to Let's Play King's Blood with me, Bring It Down. King's Blood was both developed and published by IC Forge UG, and it was released on June 21st, 2023. It is described as being a grimdark auto battler RPG. Auto battler being a genre that I am familiar with, I have played some in the past. Not this one, of course, so I won't be playing on hard mode. Because that increases the difficulty every 10 turns by a percentage, starting at 205%. And I can't give more than 110%. So we'll just stick with 100% and start a new game. In ancient times, the kingdom of Arthania was not ruled by the living, but under a firm grip of the demons from deep down the gates of hell. As slaves to their masters, all the living were cultured like cattle until their souls were ripe to be consumed. Their lifeless shells were forced into the ranks of undead armies which spread like a plague into all corners of the world. Fortunately, things changed. The tale tells that of a child whose soul was so powerful that no demon was able to even stand in its presence was born. He was known as Molion, the Avatar of God, and his soul radiated so much energy that he not only became king and united the living, but broke down the shackles of slavery. After his death, his soul was stored within Grimgard, an artifact of unimaginable power which served as a barrier preventing any demons to lay a foot into the lands of Arthania ever again. It is said that only descendants of his direct bloodline can uphold the power of Grimgard. That's why the King's blood may never dry up. More than 400 years this was the case, and Grimgard had been passed from one generation to the next, until... Act 1, A Rough Start. I forgot to mention, this game was developed by three people. Uh, they had some auxiliary help for art and music, of course, but the game itself was developed by just the, the three folks. Which is impressive and a huge undertaking. So massive respect to them. Howdy. What we need first is to gain influence in the larger cities scattered around Arthania. We should start out with setting up informants that will help us find work in at least two of the surrounding cities. Enough talking. Let's start the work. Okay, unlocking cities. You unlock cities in your reach by spending 100 influence. Unlockable cities are illuminated on the map. Unlocking cities will increase your reach to new cities. Influence is gained by solving quests and unlocking cities. Each unlocked city grants 5 influence per turn. A notification pop-up will appear every time you gather enough influence to unlock a new city. Now click and unlock your first city, Daredelor or Samsian. Let's do Daredelor. What do we have up here before I get started? To unlock cities, unlocked followers. To gain more influence by doing quests to unlock more cities. Uh, followers can be unlocked by many different ways. Quests, city rewards, recruiting in the tavern, and more. Gold. I uh, can be earned in quests and traded for goods on the market or spent in the tavern. Herbs. Can be bought on the market or gained as a reward and can be used to brew potions at the alchemist. Arcanium. Can be acquired by salvaging items at the forge. It can then be reused to forge new items with powerful abilities. An influence, we know it's function already. Does it have an extra one? It looks like it's just for cities. Achievements, Guild Hall menu, Game difficulty. The difficulty level modifies an enemy group's combat power. When three fights to advance to the next difficulty level, Higher difficulty levels increase loot and your Steam game score. No details about the achievements you can unlock. In the Guild Hall, you can equip and level up your followers. You're also able to develop your Guild Hall via the Construction tab with a Forge and Alchemist, both unlocking additional crafting interfaces. Royal Journal? Okay. Daredelor. Daredelor is one of the larger elven cities within Arthania. 
originally a trading post established between Lake Asona and the Black Sickle. The city was built with the goal of becoming one with the landscape, incorporating rocks and trees into its architecture in order to avoid destroying the natural beauty of the land. Over the years, its artisans became masters at crafting delicate silver jewelry, the work beloved by the entire kingdom. Daredelor grew as demand skyrocketed for their exquisite baubles, especially adored by the people of Riverum. While elves in general are suspicious of outsiders, the inhabitants of Daredelor are more pragmatic to their history of trading with any who have goods or coin. Reputation. So we get a new party member once we're established. 40 gold each turn at respected. 300 arcanium at trusted. And 85 herbs at celebrated. And there's faction reputation separate from the city. Angesil. Okay. Can't look at these yet. Okay. Uh, quests. The town hall is the place where you can get new quests. The city has a quest to offer. It's highlighted with the following symbols. Random quest, city quest, random dungeon, or city dungeon. Click on a city and visit the town hall to start a quest. Uh, check out quest details, especially the difficulty in the town hall before accepting a quest. Got it. Market, what do we have here? Bow, sword or piece of the dancer, body shield of the dancer. Oh, that's what we have in our inventory. Neat. Okay. A bunch of healing potions and a uh, Ankh Revival. Resurrect one of our fallen party members. Blinding Light. Oh, cool. You can skip enemies in dungeons. The lore. And disarm kits. Cool. I can unlock a new follower at the tavern. So you can spend a round. Pay 30 gold to pay for drinks and entertain the crowd. This can result in either an interesting rumor, the chance to gamble for a random item, or possibly meet a new follower offering his or her service. I hold off on that for right now, since a new follower already costs a quarter of our money. A cheater. You are the shouting of a drunk man. This guy is cheating. Another man replies calmly. Calm down, Biggie. I'm just better than you, that's all. He's not missed one target yet. Let's teach this cheater a lesson. As the guy complaining is standing up, a bullet flies through the air and stripes his belt, unveiling the man's blank butt, leading to the whole tavern laughing, and the guy complaining running out of the tavern. Phew, that was close. Wasn't sure if I would hit that. He's lucky that he still has his crown jewels. The guy dressed in dark clothing sits down next to you. I think I have to leave this place fast. This guy is one of the sons of the local Riverham diplomat. You guys by chance know any rich people who might have a job for me? Ah, come along, buddy. Alright. I am looking forward to impressing you with my skills. We got. But let's get out of here now. I've got a feeling the guards are already on their way. We got Garth. Hey, he's an archer. And I guess that's his various levels. At level 2, plus 20% attack speed for all archers, so on and so forth. Uh, synergies. With human. Okay, cool. So multiple archers improve each other's attack speed. And then as a human, I guess it... So it's at least two archers. It's not as level. It's how many archers you have in the party. Okay. And the more humans you have, you get more focus, cost reduction for all party members. Doesn't say just humans. I wonder if that buff is exclusive to humans. Uh, the symbol of humans... They're busts representing their pride and lust for power. They will do everything in combat to improve their team's chances to win a fight. Thus, they bring along masterfully designed strategies, increasing the maximum amount of focus needed to trigger an ability. And Earth. It's more armor and block rate for all party members. So Earth protects against Storm, 100% inflicted damage, but drifts in water, minus 50% inflicted damage. 
and Earth is in harmony with life. Minus 50% receive damage, but is seared by light. Plus 100% receive damage. Okay, and distributed randomly, so... Who do we have? We just got Garth. Garth, a oh, special ability. Okay. Garth reaches near godlike levels of concentration during a fight. Every time he reaches full focus, his crit chance is improved by 5% and his crit damage by 9%. We have Falkmar. Oh, we have full. Okay, we have a whole lot to read. Hold on. Back to this. Oh, it's called Fixate. To equip this stuff. Okay. So a third generation mercenary ready to earn his coin. While usually employed as a lone sniper, he also shows his usefulness in the back line of any group. What is this? Oh, he's scared of insects. Okay, there's a lot to take in here. Very detailed. I like it. Uh, Tunnel Rat loves to hide in tunnels. Courageous. This character loves fighting the mightiest of enemies, but not insects. All right, uh, let's go over all the stats real quick. <laughs> Maximum health is an indication how much damage a hero can take before falling unconscious. Attack speed reduces the time between two attacks. Formula is 25 over attack speed in seconds. Armor reduces the impact of physical damage usually dealt by normal attacks and some special attacks. I do appreciate them adding the formulas to it too. Life Leech shows the rate at which sorry, outgoing auto attack damage is converted into self healing. Health regeneration, the given amount is healed every second. Maximum focus is an indication how much focus has to be gained to trigger a special attack. Focus is generated by attacking, getting hit, or by wearing focus regenerating items. Ability power increases the effects of most special attacks described in each character's details section. Magic Resistance reduces the impact of magical damage usually dealt by special attacks. Block Chance. Chance to block 50% of incoming auto attacks. Focus Regeneration. The amount given is regenerated every second. Attack Damage. The amount of damage after reduction by armor is dealt to an enemy with every hit. A focus Damage causes attacks to reduce the enemy's focus bar, delaying their special attack. Range. The range value displays the maximum amount of hexes an enemy may be distant to be in range for an attack. If an enemy is farther away, a character has to move closer before being able to attack. A critical chance multiplier displays a chance to critically strike with a normal auto attack increasing its damage output by the given multiplier. Evasion, a chance to fully dodge an auto attack. And stun rate, a chance to stun an enemy for one second with a basic auto attack. And quite the skill tree where it starts and we go up this way. Cool. Let me sort through that. All right, on to the next one. Uh, we'll start with Falkmar. So tell me what he is. Well, gunslinger. Oh, there's more stuff I, I missed out on with uh, Garth. Son of a gun. Let's go back and read more stuff. Alright, so we saw the human bit, the archer bit, the earth bit. Oh, and this is, okay, so we did read everything. I'm gonna start with this guy. Alright, so Falkmar. The blunt and direct man. He says what he thinks and knows what he wants. His major goal was to get revenge for what happened to his family, and especially to his sister by the hands of Rivrum's army under command of General Alling. As often as points out, as he often points out, excuse me, he lacks the courage to lead. He sees that in Rajo and admires him for that trait. And he's a gunslinger. Falkmar blasts up to three enemies in a straight line dealing 57 magical damage. Gloomy. This person prefers the melancholic calm of a swamp over the bright colors of a forest. Rebel. Royal forces are the root of all evil. And noble. Most green skins are so uncultivated. Elf. So if you have multiple elves in the party, you get plus 10 ability power for all party members. Uh, the symbol of elves. Their slender stature and long characteristic ears. 
As naturally attracting the arcane flows, they grant their group a bonus on spell power. And assassin. Uh, you get... Well, I'd say 15%. You get increased uh, critical strike chance and critical damage for all assassins. And life absorbs water, but is in harmony with earth. Life is not hurt by light, but burns in fire. A little rock, paper, scissors mechanic to this as well. Cool. Holdor. Holdor originally grew up in Alash. During the latest Oyarn Riverum conflict, he was called to arms. Before the main forces clashed, he fled the fields and went as far away as possible, hiding deep down the south within his beloved village, Ostflos. The care for his animals and the pureness of the other villagers gave him a new purpose in life and filled him with pure joy and happiness. All that has been taken now. He will stand loyal to those remaining, those who welcome him with open arms. Due to his lighthearted demeanor, he can lift the mood even in the dullest situations. And he has armor up. Looks like we can talk to him, maybe? A holder buffs the whole group for 8 seconds, increasing armor and magic resist each by 3. And dwarves get magic resist and armor. So having dwarves in your group makes the whole party sturdier. A supporter. All allies start with a shield. So 20% of the supporter's combined ability power is converted into a barrier, shielding each ally. That's awesome. Up to 80%. And light. A light sears earth, but empowers life. And light absorbs fire, but is clouded by storm. I mean, he seems to be the tank, so I may as well just go and give that to him. And we know that Garth is an archer, let's go and give him that bow. Nice stuff. Okay, Orlish. Said he was a shapeshifter. He's also a dwarf. A shapeshifter. To increase max health, the more shapeshifters you have in the party. Uh, with more shapeshifters present, they gain increased health when entering their shapeshifted form. And he is fire. Fire burns life, but pales against light. And fire gets enraged by storm, but gets extinguished by water. Rumors and stories of a wild dwarf roaming the black sickle and occasionally transforming into a bear spread among the kingdom. In fact, the rumors have always been true, and the beast, also known as Orlish, has joined your ranks. After rescuing the wild being, he started following you, and while he seems to understand, he barely speaks and prefers the occasional growls. Bane of the Black Sickle Orlish transforms into a huge bear, doubling his initial life and adding a 6% chance to stun his enemies for one second, uh, or a one second duration with his attacks. A Highlander The closer to the sky, the better. Hunter Come kitty kitty kitty. And Obedient Is easily scared by the royal forces. Seems odd. These need to be equipped, or are they just... Oh, they do have to be equipped. Okay. Good to know. Hi, Rajo. I think this is the supposed leader of the party, according to the description on uh, Falkmar's uh, description. So, King's Blood. Okay. Yeah, oh, he's got the purple eyes. That's right. 15% uh, attack damage for all party members. The symbol of King's Bloods. The violent eyes and blood. The commanding aura increases the automa- They supposed to be the damage of all allies. Uh, fighter. The more fighters in the party, you get more armor, max health, and magic resist for the fighters. Not for the whole party, though. Uh, fighters receive a bonus on armor, health, and magic resist. Uh, he's also fire, which we've read. A survivor. A true survivor thrives within the forest. Swamps, though, are their least favorite playground. Rebel, the royal forces are the root of all evil, we've seen that. Uh, superstitious, this person is afraid of magic and the arcane. We'll say there are a lot of typos in these, but that, that's fine. We can work through that. Uh, similar to his siblings, Rajo has been raised by Razuval outside the walls of Riverum in the midst of nowhere. He usually has a calm and collected demeanor, but tends to get emotional, especially when arguing with his older sister, Alra. Stand behind me. 
Roswell whirls his staff for two seconds and creates an unbreakable barrier, making him invulnerable for this period. The velocity created is redirected into a final strike, dealing 40 critical hit physical damage and setting its target for one second. And with the skill tree, as we level up, I'll read what I select or for each um each level. Do not want to auto skill. All right, two more to go. We have Tara, an elf, an archer, and Earth. Gloomy, we've read. Uh, Falkmar is also gloomy. Righteous, justice has to be served. This person will be motivated by hunting criminals. And obedient, we've seen that as well. Atar is Falkmar's little sister, and the only other sibling alive, after Rivram's forces passed and raided the small village of Oslingen. All the events have traumatized Tara and made her lose her speech. Even more than her brother, she craves the day she can take her revenge, take revenge on her tormentor, Alling. And Hail of Arrows. Tara unleashes three salves of arrows uh, towards all enemies, dealing five magical damage to every enemy with each salve. Be salvo. Alright, and... Thorbin. Also human, fighter, light, superstitious we've seen, hunter we've seen, and fugitive. Likes to break into closed buildings, but is afraid to be caught in open streets. There is a healing potion equipped. Thorbin has joined the group about five years ago. He is found in a cage outside in the wilds around Middlestead, destined to die of hunger and exhaustion. He is quiet and introverted, and never admitted how he got into that situation. Him having committed a crime seems unlikely, as honor and pride are of high importance to him. The group doesn't mind too much, as he has proven countless of times that he is to trust. Is to be trusted. Axe Storm. Thorbin swings his axe in a circular movement, dealing 72 physical damage to all enemies within direct contact. Sounds pretty awesome. Alright, uh, let's go and make sure everybody has at least a potion equipped. I might give that to her. That sounds pretty useful. And... It's a potion. You get a potion. I'll have my leader be the reviver. You get the big potion, big guy. And you get a potion. Alright, uh, let's speak to some of these folks and see what they have to say. We'll start with Garth because we just got him. Hi. Hi, boss. What? <laughs> okay, so it's not a conversation, it's just their voice acting. Okay, uh, let's go to the town hall. Uh, rats have been spotted at Lendol Silver Mine. You look scared, but don't worry. You beat these beasts, the bards will cherish you as a true hero. Oh, cool, and it shows you the elements of the enemies that we're facing. Neat. All right, so it's easy. Uh, journeys one turn, cave animals, rating 39, reputation six, and influence six. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so party assembly and synergies. Uh, carefully selecting your synergies plays a decisive role in combat. Check the synergy row at the bottom of the window when selecting your units to see which synergies you activated. Okay, good. I was getting concerned I have to mentally keep up with all that. Uh, activated synergies are marked with an outline depending on their strength. Even better, that's awesome. Uh, you can click on a synergy to see which characters belong to it. Try to activate the fighter synergy as shown below by selecting Rajo and Thorbin. Why is he not recommended for this dungeon then? Oh, it's motivation. Interesting. Okay, cool. So how many can I take? We got the archer synergy as well. Uh, we have Earth to Earth. We have the Fighter, Archer Synergy. We have King's Blood, of course. We have Human and Elf. We can do another Elf. Is there a party? Oh, okay, five. There we go. Yeah, so we have Elf, Human, King's Blood, uh, Archer, Fighter. That's, oh, Gunslinger. We don't have another Gunslinger. So, there's other classes here, but we haven't unlocked them yet, of course. We can see where we will eventually. Cool. Uh, equip items. We've already equipped them. Uh, every character can equip two wearable items and one consumable item. 
There is no class restriction to the choice of wearables. If I can drop the items into the corresponding slots to make your group more powerful. Got it. Oh, we have, um... He doesn't need these because he's not going with us. I think. Let's get everything to this guy. We'll treat him as the tank. Up for a trick shot battle. I can see. Alright, once started, combat is automatic in King's Blood. You can control the combat with the buttons on top of the screen. Play, pause, increase, decrease speed. Okay, cool. And I. Okay, so I can't rearrange them at the outset of combat. So there's our main character. Here's our other fighter. Here, no reason to have them separated. So I'm gonna use okay, yeah, so they'll use their abilities automatically once their blue bars fill up. Awesome. So I wonder at what point they'll use potions or if we have to actually select it. Oh, neat. Uh, you only get one, unfortunately. Uh, attack damage is probably the way to go. So we'll grab the sword. Ooh, we got a flashback. Help! Monsters! Stop it, you little brat. You'll scare away our prey. Come on, Alra. Be nice to your sister. I swear I'm not lying this time. Ah! Yeah! My arm! It ripped out my arm! What's going on here? Draw your weapons, fast! Oh, we're into another fight, it looks like. I told you. What are those creatures? Stop talking and finish this first. A combat formation. Before combat, you can position your party by drag and drop. This way you can adjust to enemy combat behaviors. Uh, melee, long reach, ranged, and ambush. Okay. Uh, slot arrows point from your unit to the enemy they attack first. Dashed arrows point from enemies to your attacked unit. Right click on enemies to learn about their combat behavior. The rotten corpse. Okay. His knee shaking? Maybe because he's afraid of undead? So we'll have to pay attention when, um,. Darth fights against insects. Ouch! It bit me. Okay, on the bottom of the screen, bottom of the screen, you can see the actively usable consumable items. Click the healing potion above a portrait to heal a wounded unit, and unpause the game when you're ready. And I don't need to heal her right now, right? Pressure patch on his arm. 
We need to bring him to the village and treat his wound. Uncle, one of these things bit me. That looks bad as well. Let's not waste time. Back in the present. Neat. All right, and then we call it here. Uh, next time we'll continue. Uh, we'll see what this dialogue box is, and then we'll return to Daredelore and see if we can't pick up some more quests. I wonder if we have a reason to go to like Oslingen yet. We can go to some of these places. It looks like I don't know if we can actually travel there yet or not. I think we have to unlock it first. Oh wow, the map's a pretty good size. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next time we will check out both of these things and uh, go on some more quests. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.